Shut up and sit down. Hi, I'm PJ McTavish. Welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So this one we are doing, as you see from the title, 1016, or 1017 B2. And this was a request, as you see here. So the image on the right shows a playground unit uh, incorporating two planar surfaces, uh, which intersect as shown, uh, represent, uh, represent the boat, bow of a boat. The unit also includes triangular seat and two circular portholes. So the figure below shows A, B, C, D and A, B, E, F. So straight off the bat, you see that there is one line common to both. So that's your line intersection straight away in this core geometry question. You have all the coordinates. They're not keeping any coordinates from you. So you have all the coordinates. So part A, draw the plan and elevation of the two intersection planes, A, B, C, D, A, B, E, F. Remember the distance, first distance is your distance in from the left hand side of the page. Second distance is your height up from the horizontal plane. And the third distance is your height down from the vertical plane in the plan. So basically in, up, down, that's the easiest way to remember. So I'm gonna fast forward through this. So all the measurements are straightforward enough there. I'm gonna keep it up to the top left because looking at it, if we're doing our part B or the hydral angle, then we're gonna to have to project to the right hand side. So I'm gonna keep it up uh, top left. So the highest height is 60. So I'll keep it up right up. So I'm gonna fast forward through this. It should be straightforward enough. Okay, so that is part A done. Uh, you have the plan elevation of the two intersecting planes A, B, C, D, and A, B, E, F. Now I'm going to leave them light for time being, not going to bother with hidden detail, etc., and just move on. So B, determine the hydral angle between the planes. Okay, so get the hydral angle now. It's handy because we already have our line section, which is A, B, and both views there, in neither of them is it a true length. So we don't have a true length in the elevation because it's not parallel to x, y, not in plan, x, and so on for the plan. So what we need to do is do our two auxiliary views. So we'll go perpendicular. Now I start up top left, so I'm going to project to the bottom right here. So project perpendicular to AB. So I'm going to project perpendicular to AB uh, down here to the bottom right, and I'm going to get my height from the elevation. I'm going to keep my x, y line nice and close as well to make sure I don't run out of room. So we're doing basically we're doing an auxiliary elevation because you're projecting from the plan. So do your first auxiliary elevation perpendicular to the uh, line section A1 B1 So there is our first auxiliary view, there's our auxiliary elevation, and points C and E are projected on the same line. Same thing with D and F, I'm a little bit off there, but they're going to be projected at the same point. So they're actually overlapping. So by showing, showing you the true length, so this is the true length here, this is the true length of AB. So by getting the true length of the line section, they're actually overlapping. So that's the full uh, two surfaces there. So that's our first auxiliary view, getting the true length of the line section. Now we have the true length, we can project, project parallel to it, get a point view of it, and then get our distances back to the plan to show your dihedral angle. So that's our second auxiliary view, giving you the edge view of both planes. So this is AB as a point view and also CD as a point view. So we're getting that full plane as an edge view. So by seeing the two as edge views, you can show the, you can indicate, or sorry, determine the dihedral angle. So that is part uh, B done, determine the dihedral angle between the planes. Remember if it says indicate, you'll have to measure it. Uh, now part C, determine, determine true shape of the surface A, B, C, D. The true shape, uh, of the true shape include a 20 mil 
uh, circle, diameter 20 mil circle porthole, given that the center is 30 mil from the line AB and 50 mil from point D. Okay, so the true shape of A, B, C, D. Now initially you'd look at, probably look at the elevation of the plan and you see that uh, AD is on the ground line on the horizontal plane, so therefore, or on the XY line, so therefore A to D is a true link down here. And we could then rotate around and draw it in here. But that's going to be messy, it's going in over your, over your plan. Whereas if you look at your first auxiliary view, you have a true length that we marked in there of the line AB. So the true length of line AB. We also have the true height of the plane itself from A to B and C, D. So if we rotate C and D here around, we're going to be overlapping a small bit here, but if we keep it light, it won't be too bad. If we, I might put it in with a color maybe. If we rotate around our true length here, points C and D, so project them up perpendicular to it, and you have the edge view here, so that is our height. So if I rotate that up, it'll give me the height, and I'll bring that across. So I won't fast forward through this, I'll just go through it nice and handy. So I am going to project C and D perpendicular to the true length. So this is probably where I should have gone out a bit more. So I am overlapping it, but not too bad. And I'm going to rotate point C and D around A like we're doing here, but this is just edge view of it. Rotate point C and D around A so that we're looking flat in at them. So that now is the height for C and D. If I project that across, I'll find the true shape of the points C and D. So let's bring that across and I'm going to put in with a bit of a cutter. So this is C, sorry, that's D and this is C. So let's put this in with a cutter just so it sends out. So A, B are the true length. B then joins back here. C, so it's not too bad, it's not going over into too much yet. And that is point C. C goes to D. And D goes back down to A. That's a true shape, I'll just... So that's a true shape, I'm just skipping past the plan here just so it doesn't overlap on it. Now the last part I said of that was there was a portal of 20 mil in diameter. It was 50 mil from point D. Let's get that on our compass drawn arc. So you're going from a point. So point D was the outer one here, so it's on that arc somewhere. And also 30 mil from the line AB. So all I need to do is get a perpendicular distance of 30 mil from the line AB and draw that parallel to the line AB to make sure it's accurate. And where the two meet, that has to be the center of your diameter 20 portal. So let's draw that in. And that is part C done. So determine the true shape of the surface ABCD, and then we put in the porthole as well, the porthole. Now I should have probably projected a bit further here, just trying to keep it in on the page. So even if, the, if your questions do overlap like that, just do what I did, just go over it, uh, either go over, keep it light, or go over it strong on the outside of the other one, and it'll be fine. So part D, the midpoints of the lines AB, AD, and AF. So AB, AD, and AF. Define the oblique plane which contains the seat. Draw the elevation plan of the seat, and then we'll do the traces. Now, if you look at the elevation and the plan, they're giving you a good idea how to mark it in. You find the midpoints in plan, because they're true lengths. So A to F is a true length, because it's on the XY line. A to D is a true length on x y line so we find the midpoints here in plan and project them up to the elevation then we have to find the midpoint of the line a b now we can't find the midpoint a b on the elevation here because if you look at the plan it's inclined away from you although the height might remain the same so i'm probably going to be long-winded it is probably going to be a long-winded way around it but the true length of a b is here in the auxiliary view so if i have the true length here in the auxiliary view and project that point back it's going to give me an accurate half or center of the line AB and I'm going to check that up to the elevation. It's probably going to be halfway anyways, but uh, just make sure that's accurate. Because this is the only place where it is. 
a true length. That's the seat put in on Julian's trunk, uh, even though there's a bit of hidden detail there, just so it stands out because this is the part we're working on at the moment and a bit of shading on it. So the height of 5 mil up here to find uh, the points on the seat and then just project them back down to the joining points here. So, so the next part was to find the horizontal and vertical traces. So thanks to the layout of the question, the, they're already projecting them for you. You're projecting your plane down and extending down to hit the horizontal plane. And those points were here on your AF line on the ground line and your AD line on the ground line. So I'm going to draw those in and I might put them in strong over the whole thing just so it stands out. So these two points, the midpoints of the lines are actually your horizontal trace. Once you have your HT, all you need to do is project that parallel from a point on the plane. Top point here. You've hit the vertical plane at the back there. Draw that straight up. Come straight across from the point you drew across there. And that's a point on the vertical trace. And join that back to the HT. And that is your vertical trace. So this line here being parallel to the horizontal trace is parallel to the um, horizontal plane, i.e. the XY line. So therefore it's parallel from across the point here. And that's where it hits the vertical trace. Brings, the vertical plane brings straight up. So that's the full question done. Uh, handy enough one where you have to do your get the true length first for the dihedral angle, and then that oblique plane of the um, seat wasn't too bad. Because now remember, they do give you a lot of um, pointers, they give you a lot of construction lines that were shown in the actual question. So be aware of that. Uh, so, as always, I hope this tutorial helps. Uh, if it does help, leave a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I do upload. And as always, good luck with your exams, and we'll see you in the next one.